There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. In the last video, we talked about ammonia and what kind of industrial uses ammonia has. We said that ammonia itself often serves as a feedstock, so it's part of the reactants, make different types of products which are quite useful. So, for example, ammonia can help us make explosives, detergents, fertilizers, medication and cyanide to harvest gold. So all these have their industrial uses and ammonia itself is therefore very useful to industry, so it's very valuable. So because ammonia itself is so valuable, we want to find some way that we can make ammonia because ammonia is obviously quite useful. So this video is all about how we make ammonia, more specifically how we can combine certain elements to make ammonia. Now I read the extra dot point, it says identify that ammonia can be synthesized from its components, gases, nitrogen, and hydrogen. So this is the actual equation. We've got nitrogen gas here, and we add one mole of nitrogen gas to three moles of hydrogen gas, and as a result, we make two moles of ammonia. Now when it comes to this equation, basically what the dot point wants you to know, it wants you to know that we require nitrogen and hydrogen, in these ratios, one to three ratios, so one mole to three moles, to make ammonia. But what you should also know is how we actually get these different types of elements, right? So how can we get hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas to help us make ammonia? Now, nitrogen gas, this might seem relatively obvious, but at the same time, it's a bit of a complicated procedure to actually get it because if you think about the air itself, so this is the air, the air is a mixture of different types of elements. So obviously we have oxygen, which is the stuff we like. So we like breathing that stuff in because we need to have that for our energy. And these sort of orangey dots are meant to be nitrogen. Most of the air is actually nitrogen. We also breathe that in, it doesn't cause us harm, but doesn't. it's not very useful either. But about 80%, 78% to be exact, of the air itself, is hydrogen. But the only problem is it's a mixture. So if we get air, it's not going to be nitrogen purely, it's going to be also oxygen. So it's a mixture. And I'm going to talk about two ways that we can get nitrogen to be by itself. One of them will involve the air itself, and the other one will involve methane. So that's we, I'll talk about two ways we can get nitrogen in this video, and also a couple of ways, to be exact, two ways that we can get hydrogen. Because hydrogen itself, it comes not from the air, there's no hydrogen gas in the air, or very little hydrogen gas, right? so we don't find hydrogen gas in the air, but we can get it from different types of reactants. So for example, we can get it with the help of methane gas. Right? So methane, CH4, this is something called a natural gas. The reason why it's called a natural gas is because it comes from petroleum, which, which is oil, crude oil from the actual ground. So if we take petroleum, which is lots of different types of fractions, we take it and we put it into the oil refinery, what's going to happen is we're going to be able to put it into individual fractions, and we're also going to be able to get methane. So that's one way we can get methane. But once we have methane, we can actually get from methane, we can get hydrogen gas. And this is one way, of the two ways that I explained, that we can possibly get hydrogen gas. So that's what I'll cover now. So first I'll talk about how we can get nitrogen. So I mentioned earlier, the first way is actually fractional distillation. It's called fractional distillation, and you might have remembered that from how you make ethanol. We use fractional distillation, and also quite a bit about your E11 was also a bit about fractional distillation. But how does that work? Well, fractional distillation works when it comes to the boiling points. So we can get nitrogen for examining the boiling points of nitrogen and oxygen. Right? We have in the air itself, it's going to be about 20% oxygen and about 78% nitrogen. So we can't use air by itself because it's going to be a mixture. We want to have nitrogen by itself. So what we can do is we can use the, the boiling points to actually get pure nitrogen. Because what happens is the boiling points is for nitrogen, it's minus 100, about 195 to 197 degrees Celsius. So you can also say 195 degrees Celsius. Whereas for oxygen, it's about minus 100. 83 degrees Celsius. So you can see the boiling point of oxygen is lower than that for nitrogen. So what that means is here we have a scale. We have 
180 degrees here, 200 degrees here, and oxygen condenses at about 183. All right, so that's where oxygen condenses, it becomes liquid. It's going to be a gas, but it becomes liquid at 183, whereas nitrogen becomes a liquid at around about 195, 197 degrees Celsius. So what happens if we lower the temperature? Right, so we lower the temperature to, let's say, here. We have a mixture of both oxygen and nitrogen in the air, but we have them both in a very cold condition. So what will happen is this will happen. Oxygen will go from gas, it will condense because it's gone past its boiling point, and it will condense into the liquid uh, oxygen, right? So liquid oxygen, which means we have leftover nitrogen gas because nitrogen gas will have to go low, below um, 190 degrees Celsius for it to go to liquid. So now if we go to this point, roughly, let's say, 180, 185 degrees Celsius, we've got oxygen in this liquid form, but not nitrogen. And then we can just collect nitrogen gas, and we have our gas, which we need for the actual procedure. But the only problem is this is actually quite expensive. So this first procedure, whilst we can do it, and it's not too hard to do, it requires quite a bit of energy. So we tend to not do the first one, we tend to do the second type of way to get nitrogen for our actual ammonia process. And this is basically revolving chemical reaction. So a chemical reaction involving methane, oxygen, and nitrogen. So again, the, the oxygen and nitrogen we get from the air itself. So we just bring some air. And we have also, we have methane. So we add methane to that. Now we have, here we've got, this is the chemical reaction. It might be worthwhile to just, don't need to remember it, because the dot point doesn't, doesn't say we need to remember it. Just, but it would be good to have an idea of how we can get them right. So this is one way that the most obvious way that we usually get it. We've got CH4, which is our methane. We've got two moles of the methane. We have our oxygen, and we have our nitrogen. Now, usually, if they're by, in the air by itself, so if they're mixed, right, so we have a bit of oxygen, we have a, a bit of nitrogen, and a bit of methane, nothing would happen. So we have these, but the chemical reactions, so this part here, won't go ahead. And the reason why is because we need to have a catalyst to actually speed that reaction up, which is why we use a nickel catalyst. This is the nickel catalyst, and that nickel catalyst will make sure the actual chemical reaction goes ahead. And then what happens is we produce two moles of carbon monoxide, which remember is poisonous, so we need to actually remove that again before we release it, because that's poisonous. But we also not only produce hydrogen gas, uh, sorry, not only nitrogen gas, this is nitrogen, that's, that's what we wanted. But if you have a look, we also produce some hydrogen gas. This is actually pretty much perfect. So we have from our reactants, nitrogen and hydrogen. Through that process, we create both nitrogen and hydrogen gas. So this is a process that's often used when it comes to producing nitrogen, this process here. And we also, as a byproduct, produce some hydrogen as well. That's good. So these, these are two ways that we can theoretically produce nitrogen. The second way is more often used. And now I'm going to quickly talk about how we can make hydrogen as well. So we can either make it for that step I mentioned beforehand, or these steps, which are sort of off, more often used as well. Now we have, again, I'll go for two steps of how we can make hydrogen. One is possibly... To, to do, but often not get used because it's too expensive. But the other one is more often used. The first one is the one which is too expensive, and it's simply the electrolysis of water. So that means we send electricity through water and then break it up. Right? So we have water here, two moles of water, liquid. We send electricity through it, and then it decomposes into hydrogen gas and oxygen. So it's a very simple kind of reaction, but the problem is that electricity is quite expensive. So it requires quite a bit of energy to do. So therefore, this first way, whilst we can do it, we just need water and electricity. We don't often do it because it's too energy expensive. We much more often do the second type of method of getting, getting hydrogen gas, which is the reacting methane with steam. So steam means vapor. So H2O, which is in the gaseous form, is steam. So we have to react methane with steam. But before we do that, we have to remove sulfur impurities. I'm not sure if you remember, but I said a while back that sulfur itself is sometimes in crude oil, right? So just imagine this here is a bit of a crude oil here. So this is our petroleum. 
you know, and all the black stuff is just you know, your crude oil, but you can have these little dots of sulfur in it. And these th little dots of sulfur are poisonous to the process of making ammonias, ammonia, sorry. So they're poisonous, which means we have to remove them before we go ahead. So the first step when it comes to making hydrogen gas is to use a metal catalyst to basically convert sulfur into hydrogen sulfate, sulfide, sorry. This is called hydrogen sulfide. So by doing this, which means we have removed the sulfur, right? So now we can go and do our actual reaction after removing the sulfur to make sure it doesn't become poisonous. Now we have the pure substance, pure methane, which is right here. And again, these are two steps. We will do either of those when it comes to producing hydrogen gas. Yeah, you don't need to remember these steps, but you should remember how this process happens or that we do this kind of process, the overall process to get um, hydrogen gas. So we've got methane here. So the first step is methane. Combine that with, I said earlier, steam. So gaseous water. And then we also have a nickel catalyst and also have 700 degrees Celsius. So to make that reaction happen, nickel catalyst and 700 degrees Celsius. And that will produce carbon monoxide and three moles of hydrogen gas, right? So this is what we want, this is what we want here. And we've produced three moles of hydrogen gas by combining methane with steam. But one of the problems is we've produced carbon monoxide. And carbon monoxide is poisonous. So we don't want to have carbon monoxide. So the second step is we we get the carbon monoxide, which we produce from that first part, combine it with some more water. And then our product will be carbon dioxide, which is less poisonous. And we actually we even get a bit more actual hydrogen gas, right? So these two steps are go, go hand in hand, which is why I have this part here, because they are go hand in hand. First step happens first, and then the second step happens afterwards to make sure we have no carbon monoxide. But as a result, we have a total of four moles of hydrogen gas being produced. That's what we wanted. And so often it's either step one this year that we do when it comes to hydrogen production or step two. Step two is simpler. All we have to worry about when it comes to step two is we have methane, two moles of water, and they combine to form carbon dioxide directly. So no carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide directly, and four moles of hydrogen gas. Right? When it comes to the reaction, it's often that actually either one or two happen, but it doesn't really matter because the end result is the same. We produce four moles of hydrogen gas, which is what we wanted. Right? And now, only problem is we still have some leftover carbon dioxide, which we want to get rid of as well. We don't want to have that in terms of and we just don't, generally don't want to have it. So what we do as a last step, so that's why I wrote, and then we've got carbon dioxide and we react that with water and potassium carbonate. This here is a base. Carbon dioxide can act as a acid. I remember carbon dioxide is an acidic oxide. So acid and base, what happens if we have an acid and base together? Well, we form a salt, which is this part here. So now we've removed carbon dioxide as well. And now we are left with purely hydrogen gas. Right, so these are, again, what I wanted to get out of this video is realize there's four steps we can do to produce the components that we need to have to make ammonia. Know the steps, right? So there's four possible ways we can make it, either through fractional distillation, which was to do with the boiling point difference, and that means we can get nitrogen by, to be by itself and oxygen to condense out and, and be removed. And this is not the one that's most often used because it's too expensive. The one which is more often used to get nitrogen is this chemical reaction involving methane, oxygen, and nitrogen. And we need to have a nickel catalyst just to speed it up. But yeah, the idea is just you, you should know that we have this chemical reaction involving these three different types of compounds or elements, and we get nitrogen as a result, and even some hydrogen as well, so that's really useful. And so this was the, the most common way of getting nitrogen. And how do we get hydrogen? Well, there's the electrolysis of water, which is quite easy to get hydrogen from, but it's quite expensive as well, which is why it's not the most common one taken. The one which is much more common, commonly done is using methane, which is a form of natural gas, comes from petroleum. And through methane, we can get, for a couple of steps, we can get 
our hydrogen gas, usually four moles from one mole of methane. And that's what you should know when it comes to this dot point. And just to show you that it's not done in a small laboratory, this is the facility used to make hydrogen gas from methane. And this is the facility that's used to make nitrogen gas from methane and the air itself. So it's a quite elaborate and massive structure. So, and the reason why we mention all this is because we've just discussed how we can actually make the reactants that we need to make ammonia the product. And we talked about how important ammonia itself is when it comes to industrial use. And next video, we're going to talk about how we actually make ammonia, how this process looks like. We've just talked about how we can actually make the reactants. Now we'll talk about, next video, we'll talk about how we make the product itself. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.